Is one week enough for Egypt? How many days is enough for Egypt? I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I create customized itineraries, connect travelers with local Egyptian guides, and I lead private group tours myself. You can send me an email at any time, gus at egyptadventurestravel.com, and I'd love to help out with your trip. I get constantly asked, how much time is the right amount of time for a trip to Egypt? Or I get approached by travelers who already have a trip ready to go with their flights and their hotels, but they realize that they don't have enough time to do all the things that they wanna do. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my recommendations for how much time is enough time to see Egypt. And I'm gonna give you ideas that you can use to plan a seven day trip, a two week trip, or even a month long Egypt adventure. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is the international flight to get from your home airport to Egypt. For travelers coming from the United States, most flight options leave the U.S. sometime in the afternoon and then don't arrive to Cairo International Airport until the next day late in the evening. So let's say that you've taken off a whole week of work Monday through Friday. You plan on going to Egypt on a Monday and coming back on Sunday. You've got a full seven days, but... If you leave the US on Monday, you're actually not gonna get to Egypt until Tuesday night, maybe even Wednesday at midnight or one in the morning. So you've already cut off two days from that seven day trip. So my first piece of advice when you think about how many days is enough in Egypt is you've gotta factor in the amount of time it gets to get from your home airport over to Cairo. An easy way to do this is just to go on Google Flights and look up flight options from your home airport to Egypt and see what time they land at Cairo International Airport and how much time it takes for the entire journey. You also need to consider what it's going to take to get from Cairo International Airport back to your home airport. For most travelers traveling from Egypt back to the United States, this one's pretty easy. You leave Egypt early, early in the morning, usually at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., or maybe 8, 9, 10 a.m. from Cairo, and then land back in the United States at your home airport the same exact day. Now that we've talked about flights internationally, I want to talk about traveling to different cities domestically within Egypt. Many times travelers come to me and they say, hey Gus, I've got seven days in Egypt. I'm going to go to Cairo and then I'll spend a day in Luxor. I'll spend a day in Aswan. I'll spend a day in Alexandria. And then I'm going to go to the Red Sea in Hurghada. And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know how far apart those cities are and what you need to do to get from one city to the other? All of the cities in Egypt that travelers go to are fairly spread apart, except for Cairo and Alexandria, which is only about a three hour drive, and Luxor and Aswan, which is only about a four hour drive. Otherwise, you're talking about an overnight bus, an overnight train, or a domestic flight to get from Cairo down to Luxor and Aswan, or from Hergada back to Cairo, and many other combinations. It's very important when planning a trip to Egypt to look up the domestic flight schedules and options because travelers are gonna notice things like there being no direct flight at the time of this video from Luxor to Alexandria. There's always going to be a stopover in Cairo that's gonna make the journey extremely long. It's probably gonna take up an entire day. So when thinking about an Egypt adventure and wondering how much time is enough, travelers need to think about what cities they want to go to and how much time it takes to get there. Another great example, I get approached by people all the time who want to go to Siwa Oasis. They've seen it on Instagram, they've read blog posts about it, they watched a YouTube video, they're like, I've got to see it. But they don't realize that it is an 11 hour bus ride to get from Cairo to Cebu Oasis. There are no flights unless you're gonna be paying thousands of dollars to stay at one particular hotel in Siwa and get a privately chartered plane. So you can't fly there. Even if you do a private vehicle from Cairo, it still takes you about eight hours. So you've gotta consider how far apart the different cities are when you're planning your trip to Egypt. 
Now jumping into the question, the big question of how much time is enough? I always recommend a minimum of seven days in Egypt for the average traveler who wants to get that bucket list box checked. And by seven days in Egypt, that usually means that a traveler is going to need to take about nine days away from their home country and from work and from all of their obligations in order to get over to Egypt and have seven full days in Egypt and then return to where they live. So that is my basic recommendation, nine days of traveling, seven full days in Egypt. And let's talk about what travelers can do with that amount of time. With seven full days in Egypt, travelers can start out or finish their trip by spending at least two nights in Cairo. They can take in the Giza pyramids and the Sphinx, visit the amazing museums in Cairo, have some delicious street food, experience Egyptian nightlife, and visit some mosques and some Coptic Christian churches. Then travelers have the option to go down south and to see Luxor and visit Tutankhamun's tomb, King Tut's tomb, Karnak Temple, Luxor Temple, Hatshepsut's Temple, Medinet Habu, and numerous other tombs of pharaohs and noble people and everyday average Egyptian people in the Valley of the Kings and the West Bank of Luxor. Then travelers can take a Nile cruise. The minimum amount for a Nile cruise is three nights and they can cruise between the cities of Aswan and Luxor. And getting to Aswan, travelers can visit the Temple of Isis, they can see the unfinished obelisk, the Aswan High Dam, and can opt to do an additional quick day trip down to Abu Simbel Temple. Then depending on if travelers opted to visit Abu Simbel or not, there's either one or two flex days left with this type of itinerary that travelers can use to go up to Alexandria and see Greco-Roman ruins, the Mediterranean coastline, and eat some delicious seafood, or they can hightail it over to Hergada, get a couple of days on the beach, try to squeeze in a scuba dive, but you have to make sure you don't fly within 24 hours after, and then fly back to Cairo in order to get back to their home country. So that is an idea of what travelers can do with seven full days in Egypt. Now let's talk about what if somebody has more time? What if a traveler has 10 days? Or what if they have two weeks? That's when I recommend adding on an auxiliary experience. So going somewhere like the black and white desert, spending two nights driving out west, sleeping out in the desert under the stars, seeing the beautiful rock formations that are out there, doing some hiking, getting outside, connecting with a local Bedouin guide. That's a great experience to add on with additional days. I also love the Sinai Peninsula. Travelers can travel to Dahab and they can be a beach bum for a few days and hang out on the Red Sea coast, go into Mount Sinai and hike up to the top where Moses received the Ten Commandments, see St. Catherine's Monastery, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, or visit Sharm el-Sheikh to stay in a beautiful five-star resort and relax on the beach. And there are plenty of other options for different types of auxiliary experiences. I recommend at least three nights if somebody wants to go to Siwa Oasis, and it also takes one night to get over there on the bus. But adding on Siwa Oasis is a great idea for a two week long trip. Or adding some sites in Middle Egypt if travelers are super interested in pharaonic Egyptian history. So stopping in cities like Minya, and Tel Lamarna to see Akhenaten's capital, seeing the temples of Dendera and the temple of Abydos. Those are all great ideas for somebody who has more than just seven full days in Egypt. And with three weeks of time in Egypt or more, the possibilities are endless. Travelers can live like a local in Cairo and spend over a week in the city interacting with everyday Egyptians, going to local Ahua's coffee shops and playing backgammon and walking around in the city, taking public transit, pretending like you live there, having street food for lunch. Or travelers can opt to see as many sites as possible and do something like taking a 12 day, I think it is. I actually had to go and look it up. It's a 15 day, 14 night cruise on the move and pick MS Darakum ship 
from Cairo all the way down to Aswan. So we're talking a literal 15 day Nile cruise, stopping at all of the major sites between Cairo all the way down to the bottom of Upper Egypt. Folks who love scuba diving can look into doing a live aboard and go out onto the Red Sea for several days, seeing some amazing underwater life. Or people who are into hiking can do a hiking expedition in the mountains of the Sinai, camping overnight and moving from place to place each day with a Bedouin guide. With three weeks or more in Egypt, the possibilities are endless. See Port Said, see Ismailia, go to Damietta. There's so many places in Egypt that can be visited if travelers have just a little bit more time. If you want more ideas on off the beaten path places that you can go to in Egypt, like the Black and White Desert, or Tunis Village in Fayum Oasis, a hidden gem in Egypt, feel free to check out all of the videos on my YouTube channel. I'm getting close to 100 videos at the making of this video, and most of them are places in Egypt that are not visited by everyday travelers. So you can check that out and get inspired for your Egypt adventure. Thanks for checking out this video with my recommendation of how much time is enough in Egypt and how many days do you need to travel to Egypt. I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I'll be looking forward to giving you a new video next week. See you later.